We have an extra guest today. We, well, it's, she's important because she's named after Maggie Ewing and Mac Wilkins. So Maggie Mac. <laughs> can't even see. Can't even see. <laughs> so, what? What's going on, Grapevine, Texas? Welcome to episode 89 of season six of Talk Season Six of Talk and Throws Podcast. I'm Coach Jason. I'm Coach Janelle. And this is our this is new little, little baby, not Maggie Mac. She's not very, she's not very little anymore. Um, guys, we are throwing three throws coach with the webs on the I can even talk. <laughs> we are track coaches with the throwing club. The Thorn Factory. Um, you can check out our website, thethornfactory.com. Uh, we have different locations. If you're looking for lo- um, certain lessons, hammer shot, disc, or javelin, um, you can check out our website and find a coach that fits your needs uh, on there as well. Um, also, too, we are shopping. We have a shopping page for all our apparel, for whether it's podcast apparel, our club apparel, our lifting DFW apparel. Um, really cool, cheap, inexpensive clothes to go go to that website, thethornfactory.com. Our season six uh, sponsors is Texas Track and Field Coach Association. Go to that website if you're looking for indoor meets or outdoor meets, our rules, our records, or anything you need. That is a website to go for uh, for uh, for uh, for anything track and field in the state of Texas. I know, better now. Uh, fourthrows.com quality implement quality implements price right do you want to hold her? well put her down okay here we go four throws quality implements price right right. if you're looking for sale dogs not for sale you're looking for indoor shot puts discus fiber sports discus and they sell other discus besides fiber sports as well uh, go to fourthrows.com. Use that code TalkingThrows10 to get 10% off. Uh, Porta Circle. Uh, use the code TalkingThrows10 to get 10% off. This is what it looks like as far as the material. Very sturdy. Um, and you can basically put these up anywhere. We actually use them on grass at our practice location. So, there we go. Puppy down. Puppy down. So porta dash circlecom and use the code talking throws 10. Ready up athletic development. Uh, Zach Phillips is doing programming right now. If you're looking for a good program and you're a multi-sport athlete and you're transitioning from one sport to another, uh, go to the website Train Heroic and look for the web, the workout called Basic Throw Strength. Use the code talking throws 10 to get 20% off. The website is Train Heroic. Uh, the workout is called Basic Throw Strength. Use the code talking, I mean, throws 10 and get 20% off. So Janelle's going to edit a lot of this. Um, and then remind everybody too on our um, YouTube channel, please give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe to that. Uh, the more we can get on our YouTube, the, you know, the more views that we can possibly get as well. Um, and share it with people. We don't have to say that. We've watched them share it. Our whole point of this is to get throwing out there yeah. to the world. So you listen to an episode, someone from your hometown, someone you like, you know a kid interested in throwing, send them to that episode and listen to it. Yes, for sure. So, great. Sure. So episode 89. So we're going to have former Olympian, current high school coach out of Reagan High School in San Antonio, Stephen Sines, who talked about shot put. Um, at the clinic on Saturday. So this is episode 89 of season six. We're live. Welcome back, guys. Um, we're, again, we're in uh, Grapevine, Texas at the Winter Clinic, uh, sponsored by Texas Track and Field Coaches Association. So welcome. Right now, I'm sitting next to me is Mr. Stephen Sines. If y'all remember Stevens, he was a 2012 Olympian through at Auburn. He still holds the fifth time, fifth best shot put mark in Texas high school history. And also too, Stuart Cantor told us the previous episode, you were one of seven in this in this in the seventies two hundred club. Where you know, yeah, where you threw over two hundred feet in the discus yep. and seventy feet in the shot put. So that yeah. that was something to be very proud of. You. And currently you're the throws coach at Reagan High School out of San Antonio, right? Yes. And then you're doing a camp called Alamo City's uh, throws, right? Yes, we just had our first one um this past uh uh, summer okay it went really well we had about 30 kids wow so we're hoping to build up of that in the future as we hold a little more okay no so was that like a day camp it was a two-day camp okay um so we're gonna hold 
them throughout the year. Uh, we haven't had any dates set in stone, but again, like I said, uh, we'll be coming out on our Instagram and okay. our, uh, Twitter uh, on when no dates are. Okay, so you're scheduled here to about, and talk, um, which is a big honor uh, coming up. So, so, so what what's going to be some highlights? I know you only have 45 minutes, but what's some going to be the highlights of your talk? I'm going to take the coaches uh, uh, through the progression of the full spin for the shot put. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. And uh, the way that's going to take 45 minutes. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna I'm, I'm, I'm gonna hit, modify. I'm gonna hit on the uh, important things that, that maybe some of the mistakes that athletes make, some of okay. the, the errors that are seen, and I'm gonna show them a, a system that I didn't create the system. I, I had it since I was in high school with Coach Howard. I don't know what he learned it from, but a, a way to see how an athlete um, moves in the ring and how to tell whether they're off balance or not. And of course, we all have the, the coaches that we can all see those things, but it makes it for the as easier for the coach as well as the athlete to see, okay, where well, I'm, I'm over here, so I must be doing something wrong. And what are those things? And so, like over rotating and stuff. Exactly. And I have this system that um, I had used for my kids, which helps quite a bit. Okay. Nice. Nice. Now, what about working in the middle or anything in the finish like that? You talked about being the coming out of the bag or yes. over rotating and stuff like that. Yeah. Is that going to be added into the talk? Yeah, everything. I'm going to try to, I'm going to, try to put as much stuff. <laughs> if, 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 if people are going to come to this to learn how to, to for some technique, I'm going to give them technique. I'm going to yeah. give them the, what people, what they, what they came here for, not just a bunch of fluff. I'm going to get right down to it and ho awesome. hopefully hopefully learn a thing or two maybe gotcha. in, in this. In this topic. Now, you threw for one of the best throws coaches in the entire country at Auburn, Coach Clayton. Yes. Um, and we've had previous conversations. You know, you were on Talking Throws podcast episode 58, I believe. So I, I looked that up. So, she looked that up. So, so, and so you talked about, I think you talked about that high right knee coming out of the back. Yes. Um, could you just explain a little bit more detail about that? Maybe how that's a little bit different than maybe what you're going to talk about today. So when I was in high school, we, we had this um, kind of idea that the right comes out and sweeps with a, a low right foot and mm -hmm. puts the middle, which is fine. Uh, we, we threw far like that. Um, when I was a junior, I went to go to a or my summer, my summer going to my senior year. I went to Coach Dave Woolman's camp up in SMU, mm -hmm. and he kind of changed my outlook on the right leg. And then it continued in college with Coach Clayton, which okay. When that right kicks off the back, um, for a right-handed throw, when that right kicks off the back, going to the middle, that shin has to be parallel coming out. So like a knee drop. Like, like the left knee goes down, the right knee goes up, mm -hmm. like, a, like a seesaw, but that sh right shin has to be parallel to the ground. Mm -hmm. If you can do that, a lot of power going to the middle, and that's what I'm going to speak on a little bit of t today out of the bag. Awesome. And, and again, everyone has their own style. Everyone has their own body types. Everyone has their own way they throw, but some of these concepts can help early on throwers be consistent. That's what I'm going to talk about consistency. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Would that translate from maybe a multi-sport athlete, girl or boy, who's just like maybe just really strong and just wants to come out and throw, you know, because maybe the district's weak and it's only yeah. going to take 35 feet to win the shot, but hypothetically, and you have a big girl. Would a, would a high school coach invest the time to do that rotational stuff or maybe say, okay, we, we might need to do the glide. What's your assessment on that? In a month? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's uh, it, in a month. I would first uh, evaluate the athleticism of the athlete. Gotcha. And there's some athletes that can, can pick up the South African very fast, which yeah. is a step turn throw to the mm -hmm. middle. Um, mm -hmm. They can do a modified inside the ring. Um, but if, if I have a month, I'm just going to try to do the, a linear movement, which is a glide. Um, okay. That's what I would do. If I have an athlete who can have a yeah. month or uh, maybe five months, then I'll probably try to rotation. Gotcha, gotcha. Do you see where there are similarities in rotational shot put and rotational discus? So meaning, same scenario for that athlete. Um, you're grinding them in with that technique that you learned from Coach Hal and making that transition into discus as well. Is there something that you can blend so that the athlete can work fast? Because as you know, Kids can be very impatient and they get frustrated. If they don't throw far and get defeated, they're not going to be patient with it to say, okay, um, I want to continue this. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, so you kind of get a, a double practice in one. Um, usually when I'm teaching the shot put for or shot put rotation, it's a lot harder than the discus because you have a 12 pound ball in your net or mm -hmm. a four kilo for a girl and they get off balance really fast. Mm -hmm. And I say, we're going to do discus and we'll do shot, but the shot's going to help your discus. That's how I kind of pull it off and they're yeah, like, okay, okay well if I try this my distance will get better and as, as time goes on the balance improves and so I'll talk today on the two balance points um, in the ring where every thrower again has their own style but the two points in the ring the, over the left out of the back and the right in the middle have to be balanced in order for a consistently good throw mm -hmm. if those two points are off 
then yeah. you're going to fall off, you're going to dive, you're going to mm -hmm. shift. It's just a lot of things can happen if those two points aren't uh, settled in the shot carries over the distance carries yeah. over the shot. That's yeah. good. So when that entry into the middle, because I have a lot of black coaches asking me this, and sometimes too my athletes get confused. The landing in the middle on that right foot, is that on the big toe? Is that on the pinky? You know, because somehow people hit, they, they roll out on their pinkies and stuff yes. like that. What's, what's, what's your teaching on that? Uh, the ball, the, the big toe? Mm -hmm. that's, what I, that's what I teach you. Okay, cool. What if the knee's going out? Like if they hit really, really hard and they kind of have that jerking motion with that knee, how do you? Well, that's because their upper body's moving, yeah. moving so, too fast. So it's not even too fast. It's more so their their left leg. So it's a result of the left foot. Negative percent of your issues happen as a result of the back foot. Mm -hmm. um, if they get off the left too slow out of the back of the ring, the body's going to tend to shift because that left's coming through too slow. When that right foot hits the ground in the middle, mm -hmm. that left knee should be meeting that right. As soon yes. as that right happens. Squeeze in the middle, so to speak. Squeeze. Yeah. So you, so you know this. And then if that doesn't happen, what happens, what tends to happen is that left leg was wide and they actually pull the hips open. That's why they catch themselves at the front. Gotcha. And then they just shift over. Um, nice. So I'm going to talk today about the half turns, kind of setting up the middle, setting up that squeeze and getting off the left sooner. The left out of the back is the flick off the ankle. It's not an extension off the knee. Yeah. And um, the left knee will extend a bit, but you don't want to jump yeah. off it. Yeah. It's, you, it's less too grounded. Up gotcha. What about, what about mm -hmm. throwing different weights and stuff? And a lot of times, too, there's a lack of uh, track and field budget and stuff like that, and they're just stick to the 4K and the 12. Do you try to maybe implement a 16-pound to your stronger boys or a 10-pound for stronger girls or maybe even a lighter style? So when I was in college, we did a lot more of that. We went from – uh, six kilo all the way up to 20 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, so 13 to 20 pounds. But in high school, if they're, especially if they're not the best throwers as far as um, rotation, the flow, I'll tend to stick to either a lighter shot or on gotcha. what they're throwing. Um, I think I mentioned this in the podcast we had uh, a little while ago. Um, when I was at high school, <laughs> I, I, I think I mentioned it. Um, Coach Howell didn't let me touch a 12 pounder in practice. All, all I, I remember that. All I did was throw 11, 10 and 11 pounds. Yeah. And I would just, you know, throw those as far as I could. I think my best with the 11 pound was like 75. Okay. And if I could throw 75 with the 11, well, in competition, the ball feels lighter because of adrenaline. Um, so I, then I would hit 72 ish, 70 low. Okay. In that range. But um, I think lighter to on. What you're throwing 12 or 4k i do a little heavier than that with the people now gotcha. like with my kids now gotcha gotcha um not saying that it's, it can't be beneficial yeah i just don't want to do it. gotcha gotcha so how do you structure your practices on curious because we get a question a lot of times too is is i have one chop foot wing i have one discus ring i got 15 kids i got jv boys and girls i got varsity girls and boys how do i organize this practice so everybody can be productive yes kind of how do you do that and what do you do is kind of getting getting the kids going in that program so i have um shot put and discus devoted days for my coaching okay. and then i'll have the uh, off off sport which is if i'm doing a shot put day let's say monday i'll have the discus people or kids do um stations oh okay. i'll have them do work by metrics um pvc pipes pvc pipes i'll have them do uh, jumps into the pit i'll have them do bomb which is like you get a ball you throw it up overheads under mm -hmm. um so i'll have them be productive while i'm working primarily with the shot put. and then discus days it switches and I'll still have them do and I'll have sometimes they throw together but uh -huh. at Reagan we don't have a setup where I can be right there yeah yeah uh, so um I have to be very careful because I don't want kids getting hurt yeah and so I'll have okay you guys are going to track you guys are going to do rotations on the track while I'll work on shopping you guys get back here we're gonna work on the back of the way while I'm okay. working so it's always keeping an eye yeah but, um, trying to make them not get bored because gotcha. if kids do something too long they're going to start talking and just, this is a waste of time. Yeah, for sure. Any suggestions? Cause I don't know, maybe in San Antonio, but up here, you know, especially February, March, we have bad weather days, yep. you know, and sometimes too, you know, our rings get flooded because the ground and the, you know, the irrigation is not the best in the world. Any suggestions on maybe doing drill work in the gym or in a hallway or anything like that? What do you use? To, what do you do? Yeah, we do that all the time. Whenever there's a, uh, you know, bad weather. Um, we'll go into this we call trophy hallway, which is kind of all the Reagan's kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, trophies, and we'll uh, do uh, walking drills, turn those drills, float okay. thing, and then we'll work on the back because the back is so important. And we say, okay, guys, this is a this is a bad day outside, but this can't mean we can't work something, and the back room is going to be our thing. So I'll kind of take them through a progression of opening the left. I, I do this thing, the seven step drill, uh -huh. where I'll uh, count by the numbers and they'll hit positions one, two, and go through the whole ring. And I'll do seven. I'll do that like five or six times. And I'll say, okay, one is now opening the left. And then we go all the way down to where one is just the full spin hitting the positions. 
And so I kind of take them, break them down from seven steps all the way down to one as you're doing the full spin. That's the way, the fastest way I found to get the full spin. Nice. Well, nice. I actually didn't put that in my presentation today. Hmm. That's okay. That's well, we'll share it on, in a, yeah. on Instagram and stuff like that. So, well, dude, thank you so much. We look forward to hearing your presentation. Yeah. We, we are so glad that someone of your legacy is actually now a coach in the state of Texas and you're a throws coach in the state of Texas to grow the sport. And so we're, we're excited about what happens with the camp, uh, Alamo City Throws. And I know you're doing a lot of stuff else in the community. Are you doing any private coaching or anything like that on the coach? Just, okay. No, just a focus on the kids. At just, okay, just to focus on the kids at Reagan as well. Okay, all right. Well, we appreciate it. Do you have social media or anything like that where people get a hold of you like for, you know, questions or anything? Yeah, I have Instagram, just my name, uh, Stephen underscore signs. And then, okay. um, I don't use the other ones, gotcha. <laughs> and I don't even use that one very much. But you can message message me. Okay, it. gotcha. And then also to remind, he's episode fifty eight on Apple Podcasts, Talk and Throws Podcast, and y'all can get more detail and this. And I even think too, your talk might even be posted on the on TTF dot org website through the coaches tube as well. Yeah. I believe so as well. And it's, it's going to be a lot of information. I'm going to try to squeeze it in. I hope I have enough time. We'll see. It's my first time doing a one this big, and I try. I want to make it good. So it's. First one, so we'll, we'll see. You see what it does. I think, I think it'll be okay. You'll be okay. You'll knock it out of the park. So, no doubt, no doubt. Appreciate it. All right, we want to thank Stephen Sign uh, for being on. Um, that they took the time out of their day while they were at the Texas Track and Field Coach Association Clinic. Stephen did a great talk on shot put, rotational and, shot put, and so great guys who give back to the throwing community through coaching kids, having clinics, Coach yeah. Sons has done one down in the valley. Uh, Alamo City Throws, yeah. they have an Instagram for that. And follow them on social media. Um, they're very they're very accessible, so if you have any questions and you're in Abilene or San Antonio, reach out to them. Uh, they want to help the sports and they're, they're pushing the knowledge forward in the state of Texas uh, for sure. All right, so thank our sponsors again, Texas Track and Field Coach Association. And we loved being at the clinic, got to interview Stuart Cantor, which you saw a few weeks ago, and um, Coach Simon, just great connections to be, net, to be made and just so much going on on that website. Um, anything Texas Track and Field. Yeah. Awesome. All right, need some implements, go to fourthrows.com. Um, use the code Talking Throws 10 to get 10% off. Indoor shot puts, training javelins, um, anything you need. The heels have that equipment. Reach out to them. Um, they will do you right and get you what you need. For the Austin area, go to Ready Up AD or Ready Up Athletic Development. Um, give Zach Phillips a call at 512-507-8347. Um, go look at his program on Train Heroic. Um, he has a program for throwers called Basic Throw Strength. Use the code THROWS10 to get 20% off that program. Um, just a great program made for working multi-sport athletes. Multi athlete and um, working on for throwers. Hello, Talking Throws Texas Podcasters. I'm Bruce Caldwell. I'm here today to introduce the Fiber Sport Discus. Yes, many of you thought I only made great vaulting poles. I have been bringing quality discuses to the thrower's hands for over 40 years. First as Cantabrian USA representative, then for the past 10 years as the Nelco discus distributor. I introduced the yellow plated discus for the plastic's dur best durability. If your fiber sport discus breaks, we replace it. Our studies have reached into the science of using a wind tunnel and adding microchips to the discus to find the spin, the gravity the flight stability of the discus. We have found it's not about rim weight anymore. It's more about creating a balanced stability to allow the discus to fly and surf the wind. Our new fiber sport discus is made to be selected to fit your needs, no matter the weather, no matter the conditions. Check out our discus selection guide at fibersportdiscus.com and find a dealer in your area that sells our fine product. Thank you, Jason and Janelle, for allowing me to talk with your listeners on Talk and Throws Texas Style. Track season has started. It, it's there. I, I teach at a high school, saw some kids today talking about going out and running and excited about getting started back up in their track season. So go to the Throwing Factory if you're looking 
for lessons on shot put and discus. If you're a middle school kid here in Texas, if you wanted to learn what a javelin and hammer is, you know, we may not throw those in school, but we would love to get you started, get a jump start on um, those things. We got lots of coaches in lots of areas, so reach out to us and we'll find find the place where you can um, hone in on your craft and get better at it. For sure. For and then sure. our lifting. LiftingDFW.com, if, if you're an athlete looking to take it to the next level um, and, and produce big marks in the throwing, or you want to be a better football player, faster, bigger, stronger, whether you're offensive, defensive lineman, a secondary receiver, skilled person, it doesn't matter. We can create a program to, to benefit you, to maximize your talent in that certain position you play. Or if you're a female volleyball player and you're a setter, or you're a basketball player who's a post, whatever it needs, or a soccer goalie, we can develop a program, a program to get you where you need to be. All right, you guys have a great one.